Hansi, you're going to bowl first. What do you think is in the pitch for you? I think it's a reasonably good wicket. I think it uh, played well last year when we played here. And, uh, we just felt that there was a little bit of moisture underneath last year and hopefully we can extract some early movement this morning. Well, the coin bounced up quite well, so that in implies maybe the ball will. Well, hopefully there is some bounce. We're playing the same side, which means an all-pace attack. So uh, hopefully there is a little bit of bounce in there for us because um, we've got a full-pace attack. How do you approach this game against uh, potentially a side you should beat easily? Yeah, just like any other game, uh, we're going in there with the full side and, and playing it as well as we can. Uh, we're not going to approach it anywhere different. So no rests for the likes of Donald or, or Pollock? No, we just feel there's enough rest in between games. Um, you don't really have to rest those players. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks very much. Asif, uh, what's in the game for you today? It's a pretty tall order, I suppose, to expect to be able to beat the South Africans. Well, they've been playing very strong cricket since they've come into the tournament and they're very serious about what they've been doing. As we said earlier, we've come here to play some good cricket. We'll try and be as competitive as possible and hopefully we can play some good cricket. What do you think you've discovered about yourselves in the tournament so far? Well, definitely we, our strength has been our batting. We've been able to score 200 runs against all the sides that we have played. Our bowling has been a little weak and I think there's a lot of work needs to be done on our bowling. And as far as the pitch is concerned today and playing in Holland, I mean, is that a new experience for you? Well, the last time we played here was in 1990, but they had coir matting at that time. We played the ICC trophy. So this is the first time we're playing on such conditions, but the wicket looks quite good and hopefully we should be able to post some good runs. Good luck. Thank you. Well, welcome to the VRA Cricket Club. Very, very pretty ground here for this Group A match between South Africa and Kenya. We are in Amstelveen in the Netherlands. A very sort of English look about it in a lot of ways. It's obviously a, a club ground and used as such for most of the year. As we look at the South African side, unchanged. They're not playing with the team in any way. And the Kenyans, who've uh, shown a lot of spirit in this tournament to date, they... Uh, haven't failed to score 200 at any stage. Hansi Cronier leading his team up the road, as it were, to the cricket ground. Won the toss earlier and has elected to bowl first. So their first target, if you like, will be to see that Kina don't get 200. And they'll be the first team in the tournament to have achieved that. They've played some spirited cricket, have Kenya. They've got some very explosive batsmen up front. There is the side. Kennedy Otieno, Ravindu Shah, Sandip Gupta, Stephen Tikola, Morris Adumbi. Some good support from the two nations. There are quite a lot of South Africans who either live here in Holland or who have made the trek across from South Africa to follow this series. Forecast sunny and dry, and it is a beautiful day here. South Africa versus Kenya. Full delivery down the leg side and Kenya off the mark as it were with the first wide of the day. No doubt there'll be uh, others. Altiano not out four. Shah on six. Cut that through the covers, and I think that might well go all the way. Cronier in pursuit, but uh, to no avail. The crowd love it. Ravinder Shaw. He's played with confidence, but this is certainly his most confident shot. The first boundary for the Kenyans. Short delivery from Jack Callis. Ravinder Shaw rocks, first of all, onto the front foot, then leans back and smashes it between the gap on the offside. And again, nicely timed off the back foot with a vertical bat this time. And the chase is given up by Klusner. So, two fours in two balls. Lovely shot this from R Ravinder Shaw. Onto the back foot again. Punches it this time between extra cover and mid-off. So back-to-back -back boundaries for Ravinder Shah. 
Nicely driven away, and Cronier knows that's four. Beautiful stroke. Callis just over pitching fractionally. There's width for Shaw, but look at that. That's classical. That really is a good shot. Has the ability to find the gap three times in the last couple of overs. Big appeal this time, but Boucher's already given it away by nipping down the leg side. Yeah, I think Boucher realised this. He starts to go down the leg side now, but that ball's hitting him probably in front of middle of the leg, but look where Boucher is. There's no way that was uh, going to hit the leg stump. Well, he shut the face on that and smashed it down the ground. So the second boundary of the over. Ten off the over in total. Eight gone. 32 for no wicket. Beautiful shot. Flicked up and uh, three or four bounces into the long boundary at fine leg. More backward square leg than fine leg. So Callis hasn't got his rhythm or radar working as yet. Kellis may not, but uh, Shaw certainly has. Goodness me, we've seen some offside boundaries, but look at this leg side shot. It's just a, a little flick. Good length delivery, angle down leg side, and uh, roll of the wrists. Beautifully timed, and it raced to the boundary. And he's hit that high and hard over long on. And may go into the fence, it does now. So eight runs from the Pollock over and giving Hunter Cronier something to think about. It's 47 without loss after 11 overs. Maybe Herschel Gibbs just lost sight of that with the umpire in the way because it landed next to him. And then he escorted it for five yards. So Callis not too pleased. The 50 comes up and Peter Willie nearly got himself his first wicket of the tour. Just high up on the bat. Peter Willie stays there. And Gibbs has to get around him and it just lands next to him. Slow ball and chip nicely over his head. And Alan Donald doesn't get hit back over his head for four too often. He does in Holland. A roar from the crowd. As we have a look at uh, the opening batters, Otieno and Shaw. 23 to Otieno. 31 to Shaw. 57 without loss into the 13th over. Nicely played. The short boundary is straight. He may have timed it well enough to go to the fence. He has. John Pollock just gave up the chase. Lovely shot. Beautiful timing we've seen this morning from both batsmen. Shah has gone to 36. Five boundaries. Otiano 23 with three boundaries. Well, not for the first time. We're seeing Alan Donald driven back straight past himself. Now, David Hooks mentioned uh, in the last over. That's something you don't see very often. Well, we've seen it twice in Holland so far. Alan Donald's just in his second over. premeditated shot and he's paid the penalty he's waiting for another short ball Kellis kept it up uh, Illaworthy kept it up and he gets his first wicket Notiano is out well that's an important breakthrough for South Africa they certainly were desperate for a wicket and this one uh, really bamboozling the batsman big shout from Mark Boucher saying right behind the stumps and up goes the finger so the first wicket goes for Kenya I'm sure that team will be very relieved. Martino is the man that departs. He's played pretty well, 26. And Kenya, 66 for one. Pulled away with a lot of power. Four more. 
Well, we've seen Shah drive Alan Donald back past himself twice. This one, he's picked up very quickly indeed. And you can see how quickly he's picked up because he's hit it well in front of square. And with Alan Donald, you get used to uh, top edges down a fine leg. Not that one. That's racing away. Short, short leg in position. That's cut away. It's in the air, but it's going to be four. Well wide of the third man. And the no ball called for height, I think. Well, this was well above shoulder height. That's why umpire Peter Willey outstretched the arm after the delivery, but it's very, very short indeed. And it just sits up to be hit. See, well, where well, the uh, third man is quite fine. It's a very small boundary on that side, and that uh, comfortably goes over the rope. Bowled in. That's not a bad spot to bowl it. Full and underneath him. So Elworthy takes his second wicket. And that of his country. Well, this has been a very good bowling change from Hunsi Kurnia. Elworthy in the attack when the ball's still fairly hard and fairly new. It has got some movement, but there's not too much movement there. It's a perfect Yorker on off stump. And off goes that off stump. So second wicket down. Go up to the man of departs. And Kenya, 80 for two. To Shah. Good competition between these two, Shah and Donald. Donald's been prepared to uh, let him have it, but he's been very, very capable indeed. And that's his 50 as he tucks that down to fine leg. Oh, a wonderful feeling that must be to score a 50 against the tournament favourites. Shah has gone. Well, Michael Hazeman called it. That's the uh, partnership that needed to be broken before it started, if you like. Donald will feel uh, as that he's got some revenge. He's got the man out that's given him some clatter. Donald will be a very relieved man. Faint edge. Mark Boucher doesn't drop those. It's a regulation catch. And you can see the delight on his face. He certainly has had some tap in his first three overs as Alan Donald, but uh, it's a different story now. He's picked up his first wicket. And Shah, the man who has played so well this morning, departs for 50. And Kenya, 82 for three. <laughs> it's going to be a contest here. The Kenyan batsmen have started off very well confidently and South Africa are going to be chasing a competitive total it'll be a test for their batters where they've been a little bit vulnerable of late lovely shot and that is another boundary that is a very nicely timed shot in front of square leg Adumbi their previous World Cup captain 11 boundaries this morning Morris Adumbi what a super shot Alan Donald just straying fractionally towards leg stump. Quick delivery, but it went off the bat quicker. 16. Wonderfully timed shot by uh, Adumbi. Two slips in place for Donald. Goes out wide of the crease and bowls him off stump. Beautiful delivery, went very wide. It may have swung late as well. A lot fuller than the previous delivery, which was the leg cutter. And Alan Donald has got a wicket. Morris Adumbi, he doesn't look too happy with himself, but uh, it was a quick delivery, good delivery from Alan Donald. He struck again for his country. Well pitched up delivery, just uh, again the ball not coming into the right hander, holding its own, probably pitching just outside off stump, hitting the off stump, 91 for four. Nicely, quite square. You get an easy two. Clues are doing the fielding. And 100 up for Kenya. Bit of a struggle since the 15th over, but they finally got there. But they have lost four wickets. Much the delight of this uh, very enthusiastic crowd. Large sections of it rise to their feet to salute the Kenyans as they reach the magical three figures. In the air and out, caught by Cronier at mid-off. 
Klusner takes the fifth wicket to fall of the Kenyan innings and a soft dismissal there. The third delivery in a row to Tokola, the slow one. The third time he hits it straight to mid-off. So deceived by Klusner, he's gone for 10. Kenya now 104 for 5. Thomas Adoyo. Just 21 years of age. So not a, a great deal of experience. Though he's uh, played 28 out of the 29 One Day Internationals that uh, Kenya have been involved in over the years. Played in the last World Cup as a 17-year-old, so... Uh, Big appeal, he's out first ball. Klusner got that very full. Peter Willey had little hesitation. So young Adoyo suffers the ignominy of a golden duck. Lance Klusner strikes again. Thomas Adoyo, first delivery. It's very full. He only goes half forward, hits him just above the ankle, in front of middle and off. That would have hit middle and leg. What do you think? Peter Willey agrees. What do so, you uh, think? So, Kluzner strikes for South Africa. Odoya goes for naught. 104 for six. Lance Kluzner. Back and out. Caught and bowled. So, Kluzner's really uh, made a mark in this game. Three wickets in two overs. And another slower delivery, I think, Mike Proctor. Alpesh Vada, he departs, beautifully disguised. Slower delivery, plays too early, hits it straight back to Lance Klusner. And how well he's bowled. Vada goes for two, caught and bowled Klusner, 107 for seven. an ask there as we look at the slow motion this is Mike Hazeman I don't think that's too far away it's really a big stride it certainly uh, was just outside the line of off stump I think so benefit of the doubt that's up in the air but it's landed <laughs> in the space behind clues and in front of Cronier coming in at mid off Very strong in his delivery stride is Lance Clues, and I think that was half the problem. He was finishing his follow through, and suddenly he saw a leading edge and just chipped over the bowler, much to his despair. Oh! Oh, we'll have to wait and see where that's off the bat. It's gone for four. Leg buys, it is. Empire, Peter Willey. Stands on one leg for a moment or two. Well, I'm just feeling saying that uh, he was being bowling very consistently just outside that off stump. Suddenly we've seen a couple of deliveries sliding leg side. And it's a much needed boundary for Kenya. Just a bit of a half-hearted shout from Mark Boucher, the keeper. The straighter delivery. Turned away for four. Very, very neatly indeed. Certainly isn't happy at the moment, Alan Donald. Two balls leg side we've seen in this over. This one just tucked away fine. Of course, one of the problems that fine leg has at this ground is the fact that the tree could well be in his direct line of uh, vision. Right on line in the air, chipped over cover again. Just chipped past Daryl Cullinan. And a single. I 
the moral victory here to Lance Clues. Just holding it back a little bit. Batsman through the shot and then trying to stop it and uh, chips it over Daryl Cullinan there in the covers, who is still in a catching position. And another single. In the air again, they're flirting with danger and couldn't quite get to it. Good effort by Sean Pollock, but just couldn't quite get there. So more room in the air. That's the theory of the Kenyans at the moment. Well, I'm a little bit surprised that Sean Pollock's put that down. It uh, would have been a very good catch had he taken it, but uh, he seemed to do all the hard work. Lance Kluzner and Sean Pollock are roommates, even though Sean Pollock is vice-captain. In fact, didn't quite get there, so that was the problem. And that's straight in front. Yes, given out. Put the foot in front, tried to hit the ball across his front leg. And Asif Kareem, the captain, is out to the captain. Yes, I think Kareem has got uh, a little bit of work to do on his technique. Ever since he came to the crease, he really has had to play around his front foot a lot of the time when he's been striding forward. It's a prime example, stump to stump, and absolutely no doubt whatsoever. So the captain goes to 22, 138 for eight. First ball of Clusen's new over, goes back towards mid-off, and again, Pollock can't get there. This is the year of living dangerously. And Mohamed Sheik just continues to tease and torment the South African fieldsmen and the bowlers. Well, we're into the 43rd over. They need some runs now. How often, over the last couple of overs, we've seen balls just uh, going over the top of the South African fielders. Most of them a little bit closer to the pitch than Sean Pollock. In the end, he stops a boundary. And that's got him. So Klusner finally gets a reward for some very good bowling. That's his fourth wicket. And the Mohammed Sheik is bold. Well, Sheik looking for a boundary. Giving himself a great deal of room. Lance Klusner just keeping the ball where it should be. In line with uh, off stump. Disturbs the furniture. And he goes for eight. And Kenya now 140 for nine. Now, he might get four for that, and he will. That's a very good stroke indeed. And it brings up the Kenyan 150. And having said he bowls with unerring accuracy, on a good length, he over pitches for the first time. And Suji finds the gap on the offside. Good shot. The end of the Kenyan innings, 152, and Klusner bags five for the fifth time in one day internationals. Eight and a half overs, three maidens, five for 21. Excellent performance. Klusner hits the poles again, Angora gone, just uh, clips the off stump. And what a magnificent exhibition of uh, medium pace bowling by Lance Klusner. He's had a wonderful World Cup. He's delivered with uh, the ball and he's delivered with the bat. This time it's the ball. And Goragon. Bat. For Hansi Krunia, the South African captain, in the 45th over, 44.3. All out, 152. South Africa will need 153 to win. So, Kenya got off to a good start with uh, Otiano and Shah, 26 and 50 respectively, and then they didn't quite know how to just keep the tempo going without playing some bigger shots, and it all fell to pieces. Donald eventually dismissed Shah, who'd give him, given him some stick, and then Klusner into the attack, and aided and abetted by Cronier towards the end, he wrapped up the Kenyan innings. So the first time in this World Cup that Kenya haven't reached 200 is against the tournament favourites. 
Bowling figures for South Africa. Sean Pollock, 8 overs, 0 for 22. Jacques Cullis, 8 overs, 0 for 37. Donald, who wasn't quite himself today, 8 overs, 2 for 42. Elworthy bowled really well and got the early breakthroughs, 10 overs, 2 for 20. Klusner, who we've been talking about just now, who took the last wicket, 5 for 21 in his ninth over. Cronier just two overs at the end. So South Africa, 153 runs to win from the 50 overs that are allotted to them. A beautiful day here at Amstel. To them. A beautiful day here at Amstelveen. No, no sound of any, or sign rather, of any weather interruptions or anything like that. The only sound we get are aeroplanes because we're right on the flight path on a regular basis. South Africa continuing to dominate. On the Mulder's end. And he's by far their best and most experienced quick bowler. He's uh, played at an international level for some time now. Made his debut back in 1990. And his last match, bowled extremely well. Ten overs, two mains, one for 26 versus India. And they scored in their lot of 50 overs, 329 for two. First ball. Right on the line. Gary Kirsten on strike. Very experienced. 107 one-day internationals to Gary Kirsten. Like that. And when you play a cut shot off the opening bowler and you hit it in front of point, that's a good feeling and he will feel good. Well, it really was just a bit of a stand and lever looking to go forward, then deciding to play it from the crease, but that's an indication of the form that Herschel Gibbs is in. And it's really crashed through the covers. The captain to continue, and Gibbs has finally done what we all thought he was going to do, and that is the maximum. Nice, easy swing of the bat. No turn, a bit of flight. And Herschel Gibbs says, thank you very much. Yeah, I think that was an impressive thing, David. Didn't try and hit it too hard. Just follows the line of the ball. Just eases through. Wide and frees his arms from his body and just smashes it past point. One of the longer parts of the ground, but it won't matter. He'll still get into the boundary rope and over for four. So Gary Kirsten's first boundary. Gibbs has hit one, four, and a six. He really is so strong, square the wicket, Gary Kirsten. Just uh, driving that one on the up. Picking the gap perfectly. I've seen him play that shot so many times. When he's represented uh, the national team. Yeah, yeah. And clipped nicely through the gap. Very well played by Gibbs. His ability to to hit through the gaps is very good and that's another boundary his second boundary the way that he played the shot you wouldn't have thought A that it would go to the fence and secondly get through the gap but it did both and I think if the captain hadn't changed the field this ball might have been stopped by the man who was in a catching position perfect timing reasonably fast outfield it's the longer boundary on that side and so is Gibbs that is a lovely shot sweetly timed and again no effort so the bowling change brought 10 runs, 46 without loss. A little outside edge and four. Safest place in the ground when there's no slip, that is. The Nick that or played it there. The replay should show us that. Whether that was a legitimate edge or he angled the bat down towards third man. It certainly uh, went pretty quickly off the outside edge. His fourth boundary, his fourth four rather, had to go along with uh, the one straight six he hit. 51 without loss now. We'll never know. <laughs> now, 
it's not a bad shout no it's not and Peter Willey says that's out Herschel Gibbs hitting across the line there and once again Herschel Gibbs has played so beautifully and then apparently just given it away so Adeo strikes for Kenya Gibbs departs and uh, playing across the line there's really no need for this he gets his left foot in front of middle and off it's angling down towards uh, the leg side but that probably would have hit leg stump leg and middle so Gibbs departs for 38 South Africa lose their first wicket to score 55 yeah, he's looked to go over the top but hasn't timed it and does uh, have to make his way back to the pavilion Mohammed Sheikh the catcher but that was the intention of Boucher. He's looking at the toe of his bat. So it's uh, almost a sort of sacrificial lamb syndrome. And the slow pitch. I think the downfall of Mark Boucher. That's what he's there for. He's there to score boundaries. Hit over the top. He looks to hit that on the offside. It just uh, gets the inside edge, as it were. Just off centre and a pretty comfortable catch. So South Africa lose their second wicket. Boucher departs for three, 58 for two. Thurston picks that up off his legs. One bounce four. It's a good shot. And feels that Gary Kirsten needed this as well. Struggled a little bit, 46 deliveries faced. And this ball pitching well. It wasn't that far leg side-ish. It was probably middle and leg. But Kirsten, uh, he does time this beautifully. Rolls the wrists. There's a big shout from the keeper in particular, but that's not going to excite the umpire. Cowie from New Zealand. There may have been a bit of bat involved as well. The keeper looked like he was doing one of his tribal dances. After he went up, missing off stump. It's a lovely stroke. That's going to run away for four. So a boundary off the last ball, the over. And Kirsten was struggling for a while, but uh, he's back on track now. 71 for two. He's turned that very fine as Jacques Cullis. Short boundary, and that's going to run away for four. Nicely played. I think that Jacques Cullis is in the mood to hit straight. So drifts down leg side and he just does it ever so nicely. He knows that the man at short filing is quite square. given that everything is Jacques Collas and that has gone a long way so a six off the last ball the over it turns into a very good over for South Africa 11 runs from it and they're now 84 for two leg start Gary Kirsten making that into a Yorker so that's a big wicket for Kenya Gary Kirsten I'm sure will be extremely disappointed he said he stalled out the bat for a very long time but uh, looking to play an aggressive shot and uh, he departs quicker delivery and a nice ball and the over has been pretty good a bit of turn the ball before and the Gary Kirsten premeditated the shot because it was the quicker ball not as much flight going at the front of the hand and it is not leg stump out of the ground so Gary Kirsten is out bowled for 27 from a lot of balls 71 balls it's 86 for three
That's a very good over from Morris Adumbi. A start to the wicket maiden. Here's the wicket of Gary Kirsten. Look at to get down the track. And making himself, tucking himself right up there and playing over the top. And the leg stump. And it's knocked out the ground. So that'll be a major disappointment for him. And a big excitement for the Kenyan players, of course. Just a little bit flatter through the air. Got that through. Not timed perfectly, but it's going to run away for four. Nice inside out shot by Jack Callis. He wasn't quite in the right line to play a classical cover drive, so he had to bring the bat close to his body, then out away from his body. Played it pretty well. Didn't time it as well for that reason. sent back and he'll have to hurry and does he's all right so much so that umpire Doug Cowie doesn't need to call on David Constant the boy out the fielder and Jack Cullis has had a few problems with his running between the wickets in the past as has Daryl Cullinan that had been a direct hit he's gone Keeper has to take it and then take the bales off, so he's safely home. Even though there's the boundaries are fairly short straight, they'll pick up a couple more. Just working the ball away with the with the spin. Jogging to his right. Well, ball, Morris. It's a good shot and well stopped. Martin Suji, the fielder. Chuck Cullis and his flowing cover drive again. He really does uh, play it really well. Another comfortable single. Three off the over, 100 up. South Africa three wickets down. Two here, no. So just seven runs from the last. Ah, make that eight from the last five overs. 104 now for three. Oh, 
England played a warm-up game there and also Kenya played against England there that's a superb shot because we've seen all along it's difficult to time the ball on this particular pitch and Harold Cullinan has now sussed the pace of the pitch struck that through the covers off the back foot with a lot of power and placement down the wicket and straight to long off and what made me think he was going to hit that in the air for six and bowled out in the 45th over Thomas well done Thomas well it certainly has been pretty sedate stuff from these two partnership Thirty-one off seventy deliveries. Well done. Engara doing the fielding at cover, preventing the extra run. Um, goes to eleven. Callis thirty-four. I think one of the problems is that uh, these two aren't known to be the greatest runners between the wickets. We've already seen one or two hesitations. I suggest that uh, Jacques Collis is intent on looking at a few boundaries rather than pick up short singles. So here. They're all coming quickly out of the blocks. Good crowd in. Lovely sunny day. And the world's mid off where the tree is. Tree not yet to be, or well, yet to come to play, really, at all. If Jacques Collis is going to test it. He is now, and the tree nearly into play. Just wide of the tree. Four runs, a bit of a smile, so perhaps it might be just the sly bet on out in the middle. Friendly bet, no money. Down the track, giving yourself a bit of room inside out. And I think that tree was the target. Kenyans are there to make an inroads at the moment. Very good player, Jack Callis. He's moved to 41. And Cullinan nearly lost his shoulders. Just able to swing that hard with that one. Eight easy runs from the over. 127 for three. 12 fours and two sixes today so far in this innings. Just 26 runs to win. Gara comes back, taking over from Odumbi. And Gara bowled his first bill from the opposite end. Now coming on from the Moulders end. Well, with just 26 runs to win, this Dutch crowd would love a few high balls. A few balls hit hard and high. So will they get it from Cullen and Callas late in this game? Tyler did well. Really, there's a big game for Kenya. Even though they are going to uh, be beaten by South Africa quite comfortably in the end. But they will take something very positive out of the game. And that was the start that the two opening bats got. They really did play exceptionally well at the start. And particularly Sharp. Well born, Jose. Just having a chat to their coach, Alvin Kalacharan, and he was bitterly disappointed that Steve Ticolo, uh, Morris Adumbi, didn't do the job in the middle order and I think had they done that then uh, South Africa might have been a little bit worried at one stage because Ticolo really is a fine player yeah, he made 10 and Adumbe 7 part of that little mini collapse <laughs> lovely shot classic little cover drive by Daryl Cullinan beautiful player when he's going a very good strike of the ball. Oh, there's not too many prettier sights than this. Cullinan doing everything right. Good stride in. Wonderful follow through. Leaning into the shot. And also, importantly, picking the gap. Don't think that's an easy shot to play on this track. 
There it goes. And that is a big six. That has gone uh, over the little pond, probably. And it might even come back with some duck feathers on it. A confusion in the crowd. A few fours and a few sixes being shown. Maybe they think it should be worth ten. Reduced the feet by Cullinan. Just giving himself a little bit of room at the last minute. And just going past the commentary box. So safe on that occasion over the mini scoreboard. And here he goes again. And that has come towards the comedy box. And over the box. 13 runs from the over. And that has gone outside the VRA ground. 144 for three. Fourteen fours and four sixes have been hit to thrill this crowd. Three thousand seven hundred tickets were pre-sold, and that's what the ground holds. Some temporary seating was put up for this game, and no doubt everybody would be pleased. Sun shone on the day, and the pitch played well. Good opening stand this morning. And it was just a good bowling by South Africa that skittled the Kenyans. And caught and bowled chance dropped. Well, end of the day, he may have just saved the winning runs. They either stick or they don't. That was hit back very, very hard by Daryl Cullinan. And just stuck out of his hand. Unfortunately for him, straight down into the pitch. Foreman inside the circle on the offside, three on the leg side. Just third man and finally out of it. Oh, well, ball! Just hit a bit of a stagnant hurdle at the moment. Apart from the no ball last over, ten balls without scoring. South Africa. Callis 43 from 80 balls, four fours and a six. Come on, 33 from 49 with three fours and two sixes. Waiting. And uh, very good piece of fielding at backward point. That also saved the winning runs. Daryl Cullen's got himself off strike. Jacques Cullis, 43 not out. He's now on strike. And I would think he'll be thinking pretty much the same thing. Let's just finish this with one blow and get out of here. Two to win. And she was 65 already. 66. So scores are tied away here. 152 for three. Can you all out for 152 in the 45th over? So the African team looking for some help from upstairs. No need it now because they going to record a very very good victory just continuing their roller winning and that's it so the last ball of the game goes towards the boundary rope it'll be a four because they're happy Daryl Coleman walks off shakes hands with Steve Tocolo so a good victory for South Africa their coach will uh, be having a few words in the change room and just letting them know that uh, they were right in this game at the start, and then suddenly things fell apart. South Africa's batting card, Gary Kirsten got a start, 27. Herschel Gibbs ran a ball for his 38 before he was a judge at LBW. It's one that might have been going down leg side. Mark Bowser didn't last too long. And then Cullis and Cullinan. But the problems, as I see it, for South Africa, is a Cronier and Rhodes once again.
haven't had much of a bat or haven't had any of a bat today. Lance Klusner for once, not needed. And Sean Pollock also another who missed out. So that's how Kenya tried to make some inroads, not very successfully. Angara, Odoyo and Adumbe, the wicket takers, one each. Gibbs, Boucher and Kirsten, the men out for South Africa, but a very good victory. Guys, oh, that's 3,700 people here saw that. Kenya lost the toss this morning, were sent into bat, made 152 from their 44.3 overs. Brilliant work by Kluzer. 5 for 21. Hillworthy, 2 for 20, bowled particularly well in his 10 overs. And then South Africa strolled to victory with 9 overs to spare. So South Africa won here today in Amsterdam by 7 wickets.